Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Um, thanks for joining us. In today's episode, we're going to be covering how the whole electronic conversion, the electronic, the electric conversion is going to be working. Um, I haven't really talked about how I plan to do it and how things are going to work and flow, um, especially because in the last episode we just got the motor in. So I figured this would be a good time to talk about how I plan to do that. So doing it here on the whiteboard would be easy for you. Um, just to start out, rear, front, and the driver's side and passenger side. So I'm gonna get the outline of the car on here and some of the basic pieces and then we'll get started. All right, so hopefully this is visible and you guys can, can kind of pick up what I'm trying to put down here. But um, this is the back of the car here. Tail lights are back here. Um, and this is just a bird's eye view from the top down. Now there's some key parts to this electric conversion. You need a motor, you need the controller, which controls all the pieces of the motor. Uh, the speed of the motor, and we'll get into that. You need a potentiometer, the batteries of course, the batteries you want to use, and a battery management system, which is BMS for short. Um, and there's a couple small pieces, um, like a contactor, the cable you need to use, the connectors you need to use, stuff like that, to make sure it's thick enough so that it can handle the currents that are being drawn um, to the motor from the batteries. So the first thing we're going to want to do here is um, we'll have our motor, which will be here, and that's attached to our transmission where the wheels are down here and here. Right, very simple, straightforward, just what we got in that last video. That's what's going to be driving our whole system. The next part that you're going to need is the batteries. Now the batteries I'm going to be putting, I'm pretty sure, uh, this isn't final, but this is my idea on it, is that the batteries will go in this back parcel tray where the convertible top normally lays. Um, my thought is that I'd really only be taking this out on occasion, it's not a daily driver, um, so anticipation of rain is minimal. So I put underneath this flap, there's these little tabs on here, um, it's underneath this flap is where I'll put the battery. So when I lift it up, you have the parcel shelf for the big cross brace here. And so I can solidify this and put all the batteries here. Right, so all the batteries will be on that parcel shelf all the way up to that cover. So if we do need to access them for um, any sort of maintenance or anything like that for when we're testing it, we can just pop it and lift it and get complete access to it. But it's also watertight, um, just in case we get a crazy storm and get under a bridge, whatever that may be. It'll be completely protected in a completely isolated um, battery tray, I guess is what you would say. So the next part of that is how to get the batteries to the motor. So in order to do that, we'll need a controller. And so there's many types of controllers out there. Um, what I'm going to be using is an EVNetix Solitron Junior. It's rated for 600 amps, and that controls the amount of electricity going to the motor. So if we have the controller here, let's just put it here for demonstration controller. So the batteries have two cables, a positive and a negative, and those will come through the body here to a positive and to a negative. Now, what also you need to have on here is a way to start this, this connection, and we'll move into that, um, and then we'll go out here, positive and negative, positive and negative. And those will go to the motor, and that's what controls the motor. So what you have to put in line here in order to even activate the system for a safety measure is what's called a contactor. And a contactor is just a fancy coil. Um, it's a little cylinder piece. I'll put a link in the description um, of which one I think I'm using. Um, they're basically like, they look like this, but solid and they've got two posts on there. And it does not allow the current to go through it until it's activated with a 12 volt. So to break that down, all that means is we'll put a contactor on the positive side here. It's got two posts. And the way you get the 12 volts to it is from the car battery. So with our ignition from the key, we would turn the key to the on position, like we're going to start the car. You don't go all the way to engage the starter, but you just get it to the on position. And so when you do that, the signal will come across here to the contactor, and this other side is grounded. 
And so as soon as you activate the key, it'll send that 12 volts to the contactor, which will close the connection and allow the positive batteries to hit the contactor, which will turn on the contactor um, and allow you to control that. Um, this is a very simple breakdown of how I'm going to do it. Um, there are more in-depth ways to do this, but I'm just trying to make it pretty simple. Um, so the other thing is how we tell the controller to control the power to the motor. Well, that is through our pedal. So our pedal in this car, in the 850, is a drive-by cable system. Um, and so it's just a long cable, and you pull on the cable, and it pulls on the, on the what used to be carbureted engine, and it add more fuel. Pretty straightforward mechanical system. Most modern cars now use a drive-by wire system, um, which you can also use in this, and that would not be a bad way to do it. Um, but since I already have this whole system in place and it's in good condition, I want to try and use that. So when we press on our pedal, I actually have it in the car is a potentiometer. So that's going to be a little piece I have under here, and that cable goes through the, the tunnel in the middle of the car, above where the transmission sits. And um, I'm trying to label everything. I know it might be small from the video, but so the potentiometer is here. So as soon as you engage that pedal, it pulls on an arm of the potentiometer. So the potentiometer is here. It's all the way back. I press on the cable. It pulls on the cable and releases when I release the pedal. Um, it's a very mechanical system, but what it does is when it does that. It in turn to go from mechanical to electrical, so it'll send an electrical signal to the controller. And that is in a form of three wires, one, two, and three, to the controller. And there's, there's marks on the controller for that. Um, and so that'll tell me how much power to allow um, into the motor is how fast we're going. Just like on a gas car, how much fuel are you putting into the engine to make it go faster. Same concept. Um, so. This is a basic setup of how to make that work. There's more pieces to this um, if you want to make it more intricate, um, more safety features, which I would highly recommend. You can even do a contactor on the negative side. So you just chain them together. That'd be a good way to be extra safe. Double doesn't hurt. Um, the final thing is how we charge the car. And by charging it, you go through a BMS, which I said earlier is a battery management system. And so that would be, because um, we don't have our gas tank anymore, there's this large gap in between the two compartments. So we can actually put the battery management system in here. I'll just say here for now. Right, and so this, you would charge it through the, what I plan to is the, the old gas cap, which is what a lot of conversions do, is you go to the gas cap to charge it, and then this in turn goes to the batteries to charge the batteries. Now some BMS systems get pretty fancy. Um, the one that I would like to use is by Ziva, Z-E-V-A. They're Australian based um, and they have some kits based on how much power you're running. Um, and they even have little attachments where you can use uh, the, the factory fuel gauge, for example. You clamp it on the wire and it'll tell you how much battery power you have. It'll translate that to the fuel gauge. So you can see 50% power will be at the half full mark, which is pretty cool because I would love to keep this as original looking as possible. Um, and so that, that's kind of a cool feature to have. Um, I'm going to get out some of these pieces that I already have. Um, I think we talk about them more in the, in the next video, but we'll um, take a look at a couple of these pieces. I know this drawing is like amateur, but uh, this is my general idea of what I want to do. Um, this is the DC setup. It's very straightforward. If you wanted to go with an AC motor, you have a lot more components, a lot more pieces. So um, let me get out a couple of the things that I have to show you, and uh, we'll, we'll try and wrap it up. All right, so the first thing I'm going to show you is the controller I'm going to be using. I talk about this more, or I, I introduce it, I think, in one of my videos. I'm all confused on the order. Wow, I look dark. A little all confused on the order. But So this is a controller I'm going to be using might be kind of hard to see because the lighting isn't the best. But if you look on the side, it's got all different ports for different things. So this lets me use um, like my brake um, switch. So if I want to engage my brakes and I want the controller to help me brake to reduce the power to the motor, 
there's an actually a spot I can I can hook that up and it'll tell the, the controller it'll reduce the amount of power going to the motor and help me stop. So that's probably a good thing I want to hook up. Um, but this one can also be water cooled. Not all controllers can do that. That's why I like this one. Is I'll probably have a small transmission sized radiator um, under the car somewhere. Figure that out later and run a water line to cool this. Um, just so I can, can ensure the longevity of it. Um, now when it comes to controllers, um, you know, I heard this from a, a reliable source, is you want to try and stay away from the golf cart controllers, the Curtis, um, and the ones like that for bigger projects like this. Now if you're trying to make something that's like a little electric go-kart or something like that, by all means go for it. Those are rated for 72-60 uh, volt systems, um, but they're not designed to handle this big at so much time. Um, so you need something definitely more beefy like this to run it. Um, they will just not last. You may get one or two trips out of it and the controller will blow up just because it can't handle it. Um, so you make sure you, you do the research on the controller that's best for you. There's a lot out there. There's a lot of information out there. Um, so I definitely make sure, my number one recommendation is to make sure you invest in a good controller because the rest of it isn't so bad. It's just the controller is just the heart of this. So if you cheap out, you'll get cheap results. So you get out what you put in. So don't cheap out on your controller. So um, just to recap real quick, you just need your motor, controller, contactor, potentiometer, batteries, and a battery management system. We have our motor. You saw that in the last video. Um, I just showed you our controller, our contactor. I'll put a link in the description for the contactor I'm probably going to be using. Uh, the potentiometer, I got that from EV West. It is under the car already. I kind of cheated and mounted that already, so I don't have that, but I'll also put that in the description. Um, it's a Hall style potentiometer, in case you want to know. The batteries, um, I'm still doing a lot of research on the batteries, so I'm not quite sure which ones I want to use yet, so that's still kind of up in the air. And the BMS is that Ziva system, um, the Australian based company, that I want to try and use for this system. So, um, with that, Let's start wrapping it up. All right, last thing before we close out is I forgot to mention the, the cable you need to use. It's two on welding cable. Um, it is a super thick um, copper wire that can handle the high voltages and not melt. If you've ever had too thin a wire, you know how quickly a wire could overheat and melt. Um, and the other thing is you need to make sure that it's an orange cable. Any cable that's running high voltage needs to be orange. And the reason that is is because paramedics, EMS, police officers, firefighters, they know that orange thick cable like that is high voltage. So if they go to start cutting you out of the car, if you ever have an accident or anything like that, they know that it's high voltage and not to cut that. Um, so that could very well save your life. So make sure you get the orange cable. Um, that's what I'm going to be getting. Um, and just kind of do a rough estimate of what kind of length you need. And... Um, you should be fine. Just make sure you get connectors that are also rated for that kind of thickness um, and make sure you get a hydraulic crimper to really get a good connection um, just because your handheld basic ones are not going to be strong enough um, that you use on everyday wiring. So make sure you get one of those super strong crimpers. Alright and with that I'm going to close off with make sure you follow me on Instagram. It's 850 underscore EV underscore project. That is for up to the minute, up to date progress of the car. There's going to be a lot more progress on the Instagram than what you see in these videos just because the videos are delayed. So this video is way in the future of all the videos, probably the next five or six videos are way in the future. So I just want to make sure I get this out to you guys along with how I'm going to be doing this. Um, that was a very basic description. If you guys need more of a description, don't be afraid to let me know. I'll do a more in-depth video and definitely better drawing skills. But I'll make it as best as I can if you guys need a better description or have any questions of the pieces I'll be using. Um, other than that, thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe, like, comment. Don't be afraid to ask questions. I'll help you if I can. With that, thanks, and we'll see you next time.